streaming now. This is the Wood TV Live Desk. And good morning, everyone. Phil Panarski here with the Wood TV Live Desk. Hope you're all having a great start to your Friday. We are inching closer and closer to the big day on April 8th, where we will witness a total solar eclipse. Michigan is in a prime spot, close as it's been in quite some time for events like this, and we're going to help to make sure that you're prepared to check it out in its fullest storm. Teammate meteorologist Sarah Flynn joins us now as our resident eclipse expert. She's been putting out a lot of great content to help you make sure that you make the most out of that to total solar eclipse and we're also being joined by another special guest it's jack deleski from the grand rapids public museum thank you both so much for being here today there's a lot we got to get to and i i of course want to start off with sarah obviously um you know being as our resident solar eclipse expert you've as i mentioned come out with a lot of great stories trying to help people maximize the benefit of an event like this i mean first off i want to talk about uh, some of the graphics you made for us that i'm going to pull up right now Explain why this total solar eclipse is so different and really such a, a bigger deal than maybe, say, another eclipse that we've seen in the past. Yeah, well, I have to give credit where credit is due. Jack has been a great resource for me over at the Grand Rapids Public Museum. He's taught me a lot about this along with some of their other colleagues. Um, yeah, the total solar eclipse, uh, we haven't had one this close in Michigan in quite a bit of time. And the last one that you may recall was back in 2017, and it wasn't as long. The totality, if you were in the path of totality, was anywhere from about two to three minutes. And this go around, if you're in the center of that path of totality, it should be closer to four minutes. So it'll go by fast regardless, but that extra minute of time to really experience that totality and darkness and kind of eerie feeling uh, is going to be, I think, a lot different for a lot of people to experience. So you can see on the graphic here, kind of explains the order that we'll see. The sun is covered up by the moon, and then obviously we're on Earth seeing kind of the corona around that moon, or really kind of the rays of the sunshine from there. So it does happen when the moon passes between the sun and the Earth, and the moon is about 400 times closer closer to the earth uh, than the sun so it's the actual perfect size to kind of cover up the sun completely so truly kind of a miracle that it all happens and it lines up this way right absolutely and i do want to bring up another graphic to really showcase just kind of how close the state of michigan and how close we are going to be to that full total eclipse really the path of totality right here yeah, so that's the path of totality. We'll have about a 90% eclipse here in West Michigan, depending on exactly where you are, which is pretty good. It'll be a partial solar eclipse, which means we won't experience kind of that totality or complete almost darkness in the middle of the day, but still you will be able to see the phases as the moon passes in front of the sun. So it'll still be a sight to see uh, regardless of where you are, but obviously that maximum eclipse that you see in that yellow there uh, will really be uh, where it gets crowded and a lot of people are traveling to view totality. Mm -hmm, right, no, and I know there was a lot of talk maybe about about some potential cloud coverage and yeah. making it a little <laughs> bit more difficult. What are we kind of seeing for, you know, kind of let people know what we're kind of should be expecting to see on April 8th. Yeah, so April is a kind of a mixed bag month for us here in West Michigan and actually for most of the country. We're transitioning seasons from winter to spring. Uh, here in West Michigan, on average, we see about 50% cloud cover on April 8th. So that's might be the worst statistic ever, 50-50. <laughs> you never know which way it's going to go. Right. The further down south, kind of where you see that maximum eclipse or the maximum maximum totality there does have a better chance of clear skies so fingers crossed it also is a month for severe weather and potentially snow so we'll have to see how it all shapes out yes well hopefully it does kind of stave off because it is going to be a sight to see and one way that people can really experience it is with the grand rapids public museum i want to bring jack back in to talk about the full day of fun activities you guys have planned for everybody in grand rapids uh, you guys are making this a very huge deal and rightfully so And one thing that I did want to touch on, Jack, of course, with the Grand Rapids Public Museum and what you guys are trying to do, you guys are making all of these events free to the public. And I think that's a super cool opportunity for people to be able to come in and experience it, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, really. I mean, why was that so important for you guys to be able to provide these events for free? Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely. Well, we're very much looking forward to it. Not just everything going on at the Grand Rapids Public Museum, but really the eclipse itself. We're going to be having full coverage over on our website, woodtv.com. All of our newscasts, I know Sarah's going to be out there and doing a really great job kind of preparing everybody. And like I mentioned, she's done a lot of great solar eclipse coverage that you can find on woodtv.com right now, especially if you're looking to make those solar eclipse glasses. She has a tutorial on how you can do that. Sarah, how did you kind of decide and kind of come up with that way of you know, providing a way for people to experience it but with just stuff that they can find around their house. Yeah, so I think the cereal box thing is a thing that a lot of people did uh, earlier on in their elementary school days. Um, and it is a great tool. I mean, the, as mentioned, the Grand Rapids Public Museum is selling those Eclipse glasses for $1.75. I think they still have thousands of pairs. We'll have to verify that with Jack <laughs> after this. I have a pair. I'm ready to go. But if you can't find a pair, uh, you just need a handful of things like a cereal box, some foil, a white piece of paper, and you can still view the phases of the eclipse without, of course, looking at the sun, which, of course, very dangerous, especially here when we're just seeing a partial eclipse. Absolutely. And yes, of course, again, I want to just focus everybody again to heading on over to our website where you can find all of the coverage, forecast for that day, everything you need to know, and also all of the great events happening at the Grand Rapids Public Museum. We loved having Jack here, but you can also find that on our website and possibly start planning out how you're going to be spending the total solar eclipse on April 8th. It's all over on our website, woodtv.com. And if you're watching us on Facebook, lucky for you, we've got links directly to that article and all the other information you need in the description box and the comments section. Sarah and Jack, thank you so much for stopping by the live desk today. We really do appreciate it. Thank you. Of course, of course. Of course. I want to thank everybody else for tuning into this latest edition of the Wood TV Live Desk. I'm Phil Panarski, and we hope you have a great rest of your day.